horseshoeing, an ancient art form steeped in tradition, takes brawn, not braids, and an 80-pound anvil. At least it used to. Now there's the patented pocket anvil from Advantage Line. It's a five-pound tool that spreads the whole shoe, bends branches, rounds toes, straightens branches, tucks heels, closes the shoe, even levels the whole shoe, all by leaning on just one handle. Accurate cold shoeing. No anvil, no forge, no more walking back and forth from horse to anvil to fit shoes. The pocket anvil shoe shaper now has a new collapsible two-position stand. Advantage Line also features the Shoe Master, with all the functions of the pocket anvil, and it's adjustable. Instead of the pocket anvil prongs, the Shoe Master has rotating hexagonal bending blocks. You can adjust for leveling, for opening on the front, or the back. Closing on the back, straightening on the back, or front, and narrowing. You can even spread shoes when nailed on the hoof. The Shoe Master gives you precise fitting of the widest range of shoes, from pony to warm blood. Large or small, the Shoe Master fits them all. For those who pack, we have the pack stand. Brace with one foot and you can easily operate the Shoe Master or the pocket anvil on the trail. Easy to pack, you can use it when you need it most on the trail. I'm Les Emery. I've shot horses for about 15 years, and I wrote a book about horseshoeing with a couple fellas. One of the things they taught me was never believe anything 100%. And another one was, there's always more than one way to do a job. What matters is the end result. Now, here's one way to do a job. Now, after doing this for a few years, it occurred to me that it was hard work. And that if a guy could just find a few ways to keep from bending over quite so far or sweating quite so much, he might last a little longer. He might not feel up, worn out by the time he was 40. So I thought I'd experiment. Now that's one way. Now here's another way. A lot of guys do it this way. Works, but it's even noisier. Now, there's another way. This way. A tool that straightens, bends, tucks a heel, and levels. And if you're tired of walking back and forth from the anvil to the horse all day long, it's got another advantage. You carry it in one hand, wherever you go, and you can do all your shaping right next to the horse. Anytime, any place. And if you haven't heard about it, we call it the pocket anvil. Let me show you up close how it works. Now this surprising little tool will shape and level the entire range of saddle horseshoes for you just by leaning on the handle. You can fit quickly and accurately right next to the horse without an anvil. Now I know that sounds crazy. Quiet, cold shoeing, as precise as you need it. But it's true. It's just a matter of leverage. You know, like jacking up your Cadillac with that short little tire iron. Well, okay, your pickup. But the fact of the matter is, it works. Now here's how. You just slip the handle of the tool into the sleeve, you're ready to go. Now you're looking at the front side of the tool which has most of the functional parts on it and at the bottom of your screen is the side we call the left side of the tool. Here in the middle is what we call the centerpiece and at the top of your screen you see what we call the right side of the tool. Now on each side there's a turned up end you see here and we call these the prongs. Now the sharpened outside edges of the prongs are used when you spread a shoe this way, pushing against the inner edge of the shoe web, spread the shoe out like that. And they also function when you turn the shoe around here and put either the branch against the straightening peg, which is here on the center piece, and close the handles. That straightens any part of the branch here, or you can turn it clear around and flatten or broaden the toe against the straightening peg 
in the same manner. Now you can also rotate that shoe clear back and straighten out a heel if you want like that. Now once you've got the uh, shoe opened and you want to bend the branch in, place it in over the top of the centerpiece here and brace it against the bevel of the inside of the prong. Now to bend the, the uh, branch anywhere from the center of the toe clear back to the third nail hole, use this large movable peg. Just bring it down against the outside of the branch wherever you want to bend it and lean on the handle. All or part of the branch clear back to about the third nail hole. Now to bend the rear portion of the branch, use the inner bevel of the right prong, just like that. You can come clear back and tuck the heel in that manner. Okay, now you could also rotate the shoe around this way, still over the top of the centerpiece here, and bring the large movable peg down against it. And this allows you to bend a branch under the left prong, anywhere from the toe clear back to the heel like this. Now that position is, is particularly good for wide web shoes and larger size shoes. So that, your full range of bending is all the way around the top of the centerpiece in that manner there. All right, now once you've got your shoe shaped the way you want it, you need to level it. You just flip it in here between the leveling surface on the top of the centerpiece and the undersides of the prongs. Put your high spot right over the leveling surface and give just a little tweak to the handles. It takes very little to do this. And you can take out any little high spot or wow in the shoe. You just go right around the shoe wherever you need to level it, just like you do for straightening and bending. Now, you put those four basic positions together, and your left hand learns very quickly how to flip the shoe back and forth from one to the other. You can, you can fit your shoes with amazing speed. I'll show you a front sequence and a hind sequence just to give you an idea of how they fit together. Okay, just take your uh, keg shoe out of the box, and to make a front, start by spreading it with the prongs, and just whip it around and put the toe against the straightening peg. Flatten that toe out however wide you want it. And you usually want to drop down and straighten the branches a little bit. Whip it around the other direction, get the other side. Then put it in the bending position. Bring your branches in around the first or second nail hole. Do the same thing. Keep your symmetry this way. And then come around and tuck your heels however much you one. Just one spot right after another. Now when you're done, just flip it right up here like this, and you can see pretty much see your high spots to level. Check your level, and that's it. Now for a hind shoe, do the same thing. Take it out of the box, except Instead of spreading it, start by straightening the branches. Go right down over the first, second, third, maybe even the fourth nail hole, depending on how narrow your shoe is. Whip it around, do the other side. Then you usually want to bring each branch in for a narrow hind foot from the toe. And then come around, tuck your heels just like this, however much you need. Whip it around, get the other one. Start about that last nail hole. Then to level. Just sight your high spot, slip it right in the slot there. You can sight right down across it. Do the same thing with the other side. Usually you have a, a high spot up near your toe there. And you've got a hind shape. You're ready to go. Now, those two sequences for front and hind will take care of at least 90% of your fitting. But there are some special functions of the tool, and I'll show you those. For large shoes and wide web shoes, this position here can be useful either to open the whole shoe or to, or to spread one branch. You use the lower surface of the centerpiece, the large movable peg, and this sharp edge of the right prong, just like that. It works very easily. You can rotate the shoe around in there and spread very nicely. Now also, if you turn the tool around, on the back side, you'll see these long pegs called the closing pegs. And these will close the entire shoe for you. Just put them right between there, lean on the handle, and you can bring the whole shoe in if you want. In addition to that, on the back, you have this peg here we call the small movable peg. It's screwed in, and you can use it against the outside of the shoe with the pivot bolt here 
against the inside and then the left the closing peg against the outside of the branch you can bend a branch which is particularly good again for bigger shoes wider web shoes rotate that shoe around anywhere in there to get it including coming clear around and bending a heel in that way so that's what goes on in the back you use that once in a while okay last but not least is a function that a lot of people just can't believe and that's squaring or blocking a toe on a hind shoe I'll show you okay take the shoe you want to square the toe on start around the toe at the first nail hole on the straightening peg and straighten the whole branch just run right down the side flip it over and do the same thing to the other branch because you want to create a very pointed toe for this looks about like that put the center of the toe then right against the straightening peg and bring it all the way down bring the shoe down and just flatten the toe out until you get a little dent backwards right here in the middle of the toe whip it around and put your front nail hole just to the off the side of the leveling space here to make your corner because you're going to bring this whole branch in like that and whip it around line this nail hole up again about the same position so you get the bend in the same place and bring it in all the way down now depending on how wide you want that square to be on your toe you can move that spot in and out here make this narrower and wider now you may have to take the hammer and, and hit you a couple times and take a couple bumps out when you make radical changes like this but you don't have to have an anvil for that something as simple as a stall jack like this or even just an even simpler anvil plate like that that you can set on the ground or on your tailgate works fine just lay the shoe down and smack it wherever you have any big bumps in it and flatten them out and if you get any wow as you can see here there's a little bit of twist this way in the shoe you need to hit it on one edge to take the twist out once you do that and you get the distortion in the shoe in an even arc the pocket anvil levels that very nicely for you okay now you've seen how the tool works I just want to emphasize for you that it's not a matter of strength but body position that gets leverage in your favor and I'll show you the three basic ways of doing it first most of your work is done standing behind the tool you pick the handle up in one hand slip the shoe in and anywhere where the handle is down in range near level you can work it one-handed just keep this arm stiff that's the main thing keep your elbow straight and your arm stiff rest your weight on it don't push down and then just bend your knees and bounce your weight a little bit to make your bend in the shoe now as the handle gets a little higher comes around this way you may want to put both hands on the handle one foot on the back leg of the stand again keep your arms stiff just let your weight rest on your arms and then bend your knees to make your bend in the shoe now also you can take a position on the side of the tool when the handle gets a little high just step around to the side and keeping both arms stiff again you can put a front foot on the front stand leg stiffen the arms and let your weight rest on them make whatever bend you want to make it's really much easier than you'd expect and as you get more subtle with it it takes very little you can do it very quickly to make your shape adjustments even when the handles up high like that now the stand itself comes apart the legs come off it's easy to transport very handy to pack but you can also use the tool without the stand and this is uh, very handy for packing just keeping it under the seat of the truck whenever you might need it you can actually shape and fit shoes without the stand and there are about three positions to do that with first of all you can put the shoe in and when the handles are fairly close together brace one hand against your hip and push down with your shoulder or if you need more leverage put the shoe in in the other direction put the handle against your hip here put both hands out on the end and pull it back to you in addition to this you can also put the handle against the ground when the handles are a little farther apart just put the one handle against the ground this way put your hands between your legs on the upper handle and just push your weight down you can bounce it a little bit if you need to however much you have to bend it that's easy to do also now there's one more function that you might be interested in this tool will open or close either heel of a shoe nailed on the foot to do this just pick up the hoof 
put it between your legs, and to spread a heel, place the edges of the prongs inside the shoe like this between the toe and the heel you want to open diagonally, and then just close the handles. If you need a little resistance, you can lower the foot down like this and brace against your chest. Now to close the heel, you just put the closing pegs on the back of the tool, again diagonally between the toe and the heel you want to close like that. Drop the foot down so you can brace the handle against your chest, and you just pull with that other hand and squeeze that either heel that you want to take a hold of back in like that. Very simple. Goes in either way, it spreads the shoe. Now, this, uh, this function is very useful, particularly for horses that have been shod for three or four weeks and either the shoe has gotten a little narrow, the foot's grown over the side, or it's too wide, the shoe has sprung a little bit, but otherwise the shoeing is good. You can make these adjustments. And if you've got a shoe you've just nailed on with a few nails, and it's maybe it's got a little narrow on you, you can move it out there, adjust the shape before you drive the rest of the nails. Very good for that. It's not recommended for a shoe that's got eight tight nails and it's just been nailed on. Okay, enough of all that. The question is, is the pocket anvil for you? Well, if you really enjoy beating steel, making a lot of noise, and running back and forth from the anvil to the horse all day long, probably not. But if you want to give yourself a break, save a little time, make the job a little easier, and still have it be accurate, then you ought to take a look at it. If you just spend a little time with it, you'll really be amazed. Now, your satisfaction is guaranteed, so you've got nothing to lose. See, the whole idea behind Advantage is to make tools that help you do a quality job faster and easier. I mean, your body can only take so much stress. Speaking of that, take a look at this. this. Allow me to introduce the son of Pocket Anvil. This do-all marvel is called the Shoe Master. Now, there's nothing like the Pocket Anvil for fast, accurate shoe shaping. But the Shoe Master takes the principles of the Pocket Anvil and makes them almost infinitely adjustable. Whereas the Pocket Anvil is ideal for shaping the average range of saddle horse shoes, the Shoe Master, for a little more money, gives you the same accuracy and ease of operation on the widest possible range of shoes, from 3 8 to 1 inch wide, or 3 16 to 1 half inch thick. In short, from pony to most light draft. It even shapes the glue strider glue-on shoe. Rotating these hexagonal bending blocks, which on the shoe master take the place of the pocket anvil's prongs, basically changes the distance between their bending surfaces here and the bending leveling surface on the top of the centerpiece. In this way, you essentially dial in whatever gap you need for the style and thickness of shoe that you're trying to bend. This gives you a precise grip on any part of the shoe from the toe clear back to the tip of the heel. Now, in the same way, adjusting these two blocks alters the leveling gap. You can level any shoe from the thinnest to the thickest both because you can change this distance and because whatever thickness of shoe, the rotating blocks adjust to its surface and level. Now, in a similar manner, you can adjust the actual height of the handle by rotating the bracing block. You can get a higher position or turning it the other direction so that it's thinner, a lower position for the most effective and comfortable operation of the tool. Next comes spreading the shoe. You can either spread the shoe between these two bending blocks in this manner, like you would the prongs of the pocket anvil, or by turning the shoe master around on the hex nuts on the back of the tool. This way works very easily. You also have the closing function of the pocket anvil with the closing pegs on the back of the tool. When it comes to straightening the shoe, you actually have three positions on the shoe master. One is here between the two hex nuts and the centerpiece, and the others on the front side again between the hex blocks or bending blocks this way. And then for very small shoes, or just the very end of the shoe, you can take it out and straighten it over the top of the centerpiece. So, 
Opening, closing, bending, straightening, even leveling, all become adjustable for any size or type of shoe. From the large to the very small. Just turn those blocks and even the tiniest shoes fit in there to shape. And from the very thin, like this pacer shoe, to the very fat, like this glue strider. Just turn those dials and put it in there. And even on the leveling, the big shoe fits in. Large or small, the shoe master fits them all. I spent five years on this design, lots of sleepless nights. I know it's not pretty, but I'm sure you'll like it. This deluxe shoe shaper weighs seven pounds and operates in the same stand as the pocket anvil. Take your pick of these two patented horseshoe shapers. They both have their advantages. I carry them both, and they are both guaranteed. With our new optional pack stand, you can take your pocket anvil or shoe master on the trail. For more information or questions, contact us at www.horseshoestore.com.